Welcome back from the break. You're still watching This Week at Absom Nassambo. We now move on to the race for the speakership of the 10th Assembly, which is taking a surprising slant uh, in the outgoing week. After three top contenders, uh, that's House Majority Leader Dodogua Abdurrahim Olawi and Abubakar Yelman, uh, stepped down from the race and threw their weight behind the consensus candidate of the majority party, the All Progressive Congress. Now, they announced their decision at the meeting of the Joint Tax 10th Assembly meeting in Abuja. Day one, when the NWC, the National Working Committee of my party, put it on the table, that they have come up with a zoning arrangement. As from that date and day, I therefore called my bid to contest for the speakership of the 10th House of Representatives off. Joint Tax is raising a call today and saying, come, let us work together as parliament to give to Nigeria what is the best. It is not about any party. So today, I join my colleagues to assure you that this is your home, a home where we will bet leaders that goes beyond presiding officers. Please let us be objective. If any contestant wants to engage you on any issue, let him not be on issues that are just neither here nor there. Let him go straight to the issues. Is this man competent? Is he transparent? Does he have the right environment? Can he be able to lead just and fair? Those are the kind of hard questions all the contestants are supposed to be asking. And we, the people, or you, the people, that will be doing the voting at the end of the day, those are the type of questions you need to be asking. Belief, my core belief, is that if you come here on the platform of a party, there's a saying all over the world, even in the most advanced democracy, that your party is always supreme. You will disagree with your party. Well, outgoing Speaker Femi Bajabi Amela there are providing some sort of support to. Uh, the anointed candidate of the All Progressives Congress for the speakership position, uh, Tajuddin Abbas. And of course, joining me now is Honorable Ali Madaki, member elect representing the Dallas Federal constituency of Kano State uh, on the platform of the New Nigerian People's Party and MPP. He is also a ranking member, and of course, he used to be uh, with the governing party. And of course, he's also the secretary of the Joint Task 10th Assembly. Thank you so much uh, for joining us <laughs> to help us understand these issues. Now, we've seen three um, candidates stepping down, uh, three aspirants stepping down for the anointed candidate of the uh, APC. And you are in the NMPP and you're providing some sort of support for uh, this team. Uh, talk to us about that, first of well, all. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. And uh, uh, to begin with your question of uh, three other contestants stepping down for Tajuddin Abbas, I think that should not come as a surprise to Nigerians. That is part of politics and politicking. And uh, I believe that is good for our democracy. We at the Joint Tax believe that we should have a very robust democracy. We should have a rancopri House of Representatives where our main concern and main focus should be the well-being of the Nigerian citizen. And uh, the way to do it is to select leaders based on competence, based on intellect, based on capacity, and based on their interaction with other members. And we believe if that is done, irrespective of party, we will have an assembly that Nigerians will be proud of. And that's what we intend to have in the 10th assembly. So you're using this bipartisan approach to see that we get a leader that's acceptable to everyone. Uh, so is there a working relationship between the NMPP and the APC no, going not, into this? As, because as, as at now, it's not about having a working relationship between the APC and the NMPP. It is about having a, a national assembly that will work for all Nigerians, irrespective of tribe, religion, or whatever primordial differences we have in this country. I believe if this country is to move forward, we have to do away with all these 
sentiment and pick the best from among ourselves. And our jo the joint task, what we intend to do, is to do what is obtainable everywhere. Uh, the best practices in democracies is the party with the majority of members in that assembly is allowed to pick who will be the presiding officers. But in allowing the party, we at the joint tax decide to have certain criteria. And what are those criteria? Are these are uh, what is the level of intellect, your level of interaction, your contribution to the house. Abbas Tajuddin, if you look at his resume, you will see he has brought 71 bills. If you have been to the parliament or if you talk to any parliamentarian to even have one bill out of those 17 21 of his bill have been assented by mr president that is not a small feat i have been in the parliament for eight years i have only one bill to my name although uh, in the eighth assembly i have the highest number of motions but not bills but tajuddin abbas has as we speak 21 bills that have been assented. Yet, uh, Mokhtar Betara, who is one of the leading contestants, actually says that many lawmakers don't know Tajuddin Abbas. Well, I beg to disagree because what is the process of having your bill get assented? It goes for first reading, second reading, you go and do public hearing, you do third reading before it gets passed. If you have 21 bills in an assembly pass, any member in that assembly who claims not to know that person, it means that, number does, that member does not go to sitting. Even, that when, even be, when that member that is be, the chairman of the appropriation will be, committee. That will be a very big <laughs> indictment on any member. Even, even what I'm if saying, that, chairman, well. that person is the hear chairman me, of the appropriation hear committee. Well. Hear me very well. What I'm saying, if any member in the House of Representatives now will say, that a member who has 21 bills assented by Mr. President is not known to him or to some members. Any member who will make that allegation, take it from me, that member does not go and do his work. Well, that member who said this is the one who is in charge of the appropriation committee. Well, and maybe, he appropriates maybe, projects let me, across let the country. Say, you and I know how important let, that let committee me, is. Let me say, maybe it's part of politics and politicking. <laughs> Okay, well, so we'll leave it at that. But let's move on now to the issues before us and how it's important to get a speaker that's well acceptable and trusted by Nigerians. Do you think we can afford another rubber stamp in the 10th Assembly? Because the outgoing one, which was endorsed by the APC firm, Bajabi Amela, and then, of course, uh, the President of the Senate, uh, Ahmad Lawan, they have been accused of being rubber stamp. Do you think Nigerians have well, that patience to well, accommodate Well, let me, let me say again? quite clearly that I was in the 7th and 8th Assembly, but I was not in the 9th Assembly. But the Pemi Bajabi Amila that I know in the 7th and the 8th Assembly cannot be a robust stamp to anybody. Well, that's the perception. Get this, he was the opposition leader for eight years. By then, initially I was not part of the opposition, but me and Pemi were best of friends because I believe in the kind of ideals he's always pushing at the floor of the house and when he became the majority leader he did same and uh, I, like i said i wasn't in the ninth assembly so i cannot say much about what happens but i believe based on his character i know but you're a nigerian i would have been reading the newspapers based on and to but, know uh, that nigerians no, are saying that this outgoing this assembly has been is, sleeping in this, bed with the there, executive there is this saying in my place that when you don't meet a man for a long time, when you see him, don't ask him about his character. Because <laughs> character does not change. And I know Pemi Bajat to be somebody of very sound moral character, to the best of my knowledge. Okay. So as we head into the 10th uh, Assembly uh, on Proclamation Day, June 13, there is this talk of a gang up. Ali Madaki against the anointed candidate of the APC for speakership. Gang How prepared is the joint tax to deliver Tajuddin Abbas? Well, if you look at it, the joint tax itself is a kind of gang up because <laughs> I am of the NMPP. The co-chairman is of the PDP. The chairman is of the APC. 
So I don't know how you... And if you look at what has been happening, just a few days back, uh, a, a greater chunk of the opposition, we came together, together and endorsed Tajuddin Abbas here in Transcorp Hotel. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw it. Uh, here but in Transcorp. And you need orders. to come and see the numbers. Can you take that to the bank, knowing as a politician that we people can. get into the hall, uh, I mean, well, the, chamber, well, the chamber on election day, and they become individualistic that and is, not working as groups on that day? Well, I can bet you the tense assembly intends to work as a group, and we will work as a group. And on that day, we will work as a group, and we'll speak as one. Have you heard of the group known as G7, made up of top contenders for this position? Well, it could be G6 now, because one of them, Ali Dugua, has stepped down. Well, but that G7, maybe before, we finish, uh, before it became G6. Before we finish this interview, they could become G2 or G1. <laughs> because no, I'm telling has, you, based uh, on what I know. Honorable Ahmed Wase, who is the outgoing deputy speaker, you also have the appropriation committee chairman there, Ali Dogua, the majority le leader was there. And, you know, let, it goes let, on there. Let me, you let let me say, say of that. let me say, this aren't are, you afraid of this, that gang? These are actually. all people I know who are my friends and who I believe are qualified to be speakers, but we must have one speaker at a time. And you think Tajidina Abbas is that speaker? And I think the best among the lot is Honorable Tajuddin Abbas. What are his leadership skills that you think can help to... I mean, you and I know how rancorous the House of Reps can be. Yes. You have more newer members he has, than the older he has, members. He has the can he handle those he new has members? The, he has the comportment. He has the temperament to handle issues in the House of Representatives. I have known him for eight years. Uh, my seat is just in front of his seat for four years and I can attest to the fact that he is somebody who can tolerate a lot of things. He is somebody who is willing to listen, which is part of what you need to be a speaker in the House of Representatives. And uh, his total level of comportment will be very suitable. And there to are be cries, a speaker in the House of Representatives. And there are cries of injustice in the APC, including from none other than uh, Honorable Ahmed Wase, who is the outgoing deputy speaker, saying that the Northwest Geopolitical Zone, which you come from, uh, shouldn't be having the deputy president of the Senate and then having the speaker of the House of Representatives at the same time. Well, Where is well, federal character? Well, well, unfortunately, I'm not a member of the APC. Uh, so I may not want to dwell on issues that are purely APC, but what I want to tell you is that in Nigerian politics, nobody will discard or neglect the Northwest because of the amount of boat you get from the zone, which is very important. But equally, the North Central is a very important part of the country, which I believe SPC as a party will consider, and if there is any mistake or error made, I'm sure the party will look into it. And there are other ways where those that are not fully accommodated in this arrangement will be accommodated. Honorable Madaki, I want to go back to your NMPP. Is there a working understanding between your national leader, uh, uh, Kwan Kwan so, Rabi Musa Kwan Kwan so, and the outgoing national leader of the governing party, uh, Bola Tinobu. Let me. As to how the next government should be, let, is it let, true that let, you let people are working say, towards a government of national let unity? Let me say, my leader is concerned primarily about the well being of the Nigerian citizen. He is concerned about how Nigeria will be tomorrow. He is concerned about the plight of the common man. That is, these are the major concern of my leader. And is he warming up to take a ministerial position in uh, the incoming government? How true is it? That, well, these uh, are all he says. My leader as a Nigerian is desirous of seeing that Nigeria moves forward. He is desirous of uh, trying to make sure that there is a uh, a good working relationship between all arms of government. That is why you see uh, myself and other members being in the joint tax. Because if yes. we don't have his blessing, we won't be in the joint tax.
Interesting indeed. <laughs> so Honorable Abdul Mumin Jibrin actually set up that meeting between Tinubu and Kwonko. So in uh, France, and then of course that is causing a lot of uproar. The APC that members is, in, that is, in the Northwest are threatening right now that if Tinubu dares bring Kwonko and so into his government, that they are going to destabilize Tinubu's government oh. in terms of what the is, political party what within is, the Northwest. What, is what, the, what do you what make is of that the political balu? of those members that are making that statement compared to uh, engineer Abi Musa Konkwaso. And the issue of uh, somebody facilitated the meeting or the other is all hearsay. It's all hearsay. The meeting has taken place. We don't know who facilitated it. We don't know how it happens. And uh, in my opinion, all Nigerians should be happy that leaders of thought from various parts of the country are coming together to discuss how Nigeria will be a better federation. Okay, well, the person who made that statement specifically is um, Abdul Majid Kwamanda, who you and I know is a top APC leader in Kano State. No. And this is what he had I to say, know. that we in the Northwest uh, do not welcome Rabi Musa Kwanko to is, our party, APC. Who is, we do not accept the idea of Bola Tinubu giving him any appointment, who, even as low as a messenger in our dear party. Should Tinubu ignore our outcry and appoint Kwanko, so we are going to disrupt the entire APC in the North and withdraw our support for him. Who is Abdul Majid that you are talking about? I don't know. Abdul who, Majid Commander. I don't know who, who you are talking is an about. APC leader which in position? Kano. Which, which position well, does he hold in Kano? Well, he doesn't hold a specific position. Which election? A which election? From councillor to president, which one has he contested? You and I know the no, person we are talking you. about. And you know his no, but I'm asking you, which election has <laughs> he contested? Politics. Which position? Has he held in Kano politics? Tell me. So you think his views no, don't I'm matter? No, I'm asking you. Well, this now is a politician that I came to you, and he's, you know he's me. making his views. I have been in the House no. of Representatives from 2011 to 2009. And now I'm a member elect to the House of Representatives. In 2019 to 2000, and I contested for Senate, yeah. Kano Central. Yeah, and now I am back yeah. in the House of Representatives. Yes. So if somebody, and I have been uh, acting secretary, uh, PDP. I have been member of the Northwest Caretaker Committee, PDP. These are positions I have held. So when I talk, when I'm here to talk on behalf of the joint tax, people ask you who is this? They know who is talking. So you are telling me somebody I don't know. I don't know his antecedents. So that is why I'm asking you who is he? Which positions uh, okay. has he uh, held before? It's interesting to know that a Kano politician doesn't know another Kano politician. It's not so well, <laughs> let's go on uh, to uh, Tajuddin Abbas coming from Zaria Federal Constituency. Let's talk about uh, the sort of uh, leadership you expect him. Paradventure is able to uh, win the speakership. What sort of leadership do you think well, he'll be providing me, in the 10th assembly? Let me tell you a little about Tajidin Abbas. Tajidin Abbas was a primary school teacher, was a lecturer at Pedro Polytechnic Kaduna. He was a lecturer at Kaduna State University. Tajidin Abbas was a manager at Nigerian Tobacco Company, now British Tobacco. Yeah, Tajuddin Abbas tobacco. was a member of the House of Representatives or is a member of the House of Representatives from 2011 to date. And now he is member elect in the House of Representatives. That alone tells you that Tajuddin Abbas must have come to the plate with something which makes his constituent to elect him three times. And as we speak now, he's the chairman of the Committee on Transport. And uh, he is a PhD holder. And like I told you before, he has 21 bills assented to. Any member of parliament, when you tell him somebody has one bill, one, and, and what to. if I tell you that those bills were assented to because of the backing of Nasser Erufai, his governor, who had some of those bills, you know, written it's, and provided to Tajuddin Abbas to, 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 to sponsor in the those, house. And why, those bills were why actually didn't, Erufai's bills and not necessarily why didn't, Tajuddin Abbas bills. Why didn't, let me accept without conceding, let's say that is what happens. Why didn't Erufai give it to any other member in Kaduna? Why did Erupa give it to Tajidin? They have 16 members, one, two, 16 members in the House of Representatives from Kaduna State. Why didn't Erupa give it to any other one? Because so, he felt Tajidin has the intellect. 
he has the good working because to have any bill pass in the house you must have a very good working relationship with your colleagues if not I will tell you, me that is talking to you now, how many bills I have killed. If members don't like your appears, your bill will not see the light of the day. Even your motion. And talk, when it's killed, is it not bills. killing the bill on behalf of the Nigerian people? Are you not killing the dreams no, of the Nigerian people? When you killed a bill, when you know it's not in the interest of the Nigerian people. Okay. So now let's talk about the talks here and there that this is a compensation to Nasser Erufa and the CPC it's not wing. It's the not, CPC it's wing not true. of take it, the take APC. It, take it from me. It's not true. It's not true. We found Tajdin Abbas to be someone who can unite us. He is an empire. That is part of the mere reason some of us who are not even in the same party with him came and said Tajdin Abbas should be the speaker. Let me tell you one interesting issue about Tajidin Abbas. The main person... Very quickly as we try to run off. Yes, the main person who brought this issue of Tajidin Abbas should contest for the speakership is the vice chairman of his committee. Not Femi Bajabia Mila. Not also Femi Bajabia Mila. Femi Bajabia Mila was sold into the issue by members, especially the vice chairman of Tajidin Abbas. And let me tell you something about the house, which most people outside don't know. Your biggest enemy in the house, if you are a chairman, is your deputy chairman. Because usually the chairman and the deputy chairman don't see eye to eye. That's the chairman of, of a, a committee, committee in the house. Yeah. Because usually the working relationship is not all that very good. Of course, but because Tajidin of Abbas, juicy details. <laughs> but Tajidin Abbas, because of his kind of character, an attitude. It is his deputy chairman who was going out to campaign. And the deputy chairman, if I'm not wrong, is either from South East or South South, who is going out, who started this whole issue, which we bought into. I'm telling you, Tajuddin Abbas is somebody you can relate to very, very easily. So he's a man who can deliver? He can deliver for Nigerians. Okay, but you didn't answer that specific part I wanted to know. It, does it look like it's a compensation for the CPC wing I told you it's not of true. the APC as the existing know, I government? I don't know who is bringing this mm -hmm. even as a topic of discussion. It's not true. Okay. It's not true. So very quickly before I let you go, um, talk to us about Kano politics as we move ahead into the next government and uh, how the NMPP is going to govern Kano state. You have the only state as you, uh, uh, you, you have a governor in that state and that's the only governor you have. Uh, talk to us about the sort of policies Nigerians should have going forward. You're a lawmaker well, at the federal well, level well, and Kano all of that. Well, people knows what to expect from our government. We have been there. We have done it before, and uh, by the grace of God, we will not disappoint the people of Kano. You see, when Kongkoso was in power, there was pre-education, children going to school, not only go to school pre, they were fed by the state government, they were given uniform, uh, you have free health care, which was available to every of the 44 local government we have in Kano, all right. and these are all things that will bring back to Kano. Our posterity, prosperity, our trade and industry, okay. our commercial venture. That's so interesting to hear These that. are all things that our government and, uh, will I just give hope more you, power and energy. Have you been promised a juicy committee by Tajuddin Abbas so that you well, will help to deliver I, some of these things I went to a meeting yesterday <laughs> of the quickly, opposition where issues like this yeah. were raised. I said it to them abundantly clear that I, as Ali Yusan Madaki has not been promised anything okay. by Tajuddin Abbas. Well, I'm working for Tajuddin Abbas because I believe in him. All right. And must, I believe uh, in the project. That's a very good place to actually leave it. Honorable Ali Madaki is a federal uh, parliamentarian representing Dala federal constituency. I mean, he's a honorable member elect and they will be sworn in on uh, June the 13th. So the politics of who becomes the speaker uh, is ongoing. Very hot indeed, and uh, we just hope that you all take it easy uh, when you get to the floor on Proclamation Day on June 13. No fights and all of that. Well, we must thank you so much for being on the program, and this is where we'll have to draw the curtains on to this program. On behalf of our team in London, Lagos, and Abuja, thank you for watching, and do enjoy the rest of the day. I'm Somna Samba. Thanks.